Hello and welcome to our final, final session of our six simple intentions for staying sane during COVID-19 and beyond. I am your guide, Janelle. I've been so happy to be with you here. I hope you have found these strategically chosen intentions to be a good, solid footing for you to make your way through this global pandemic and also be able to find sure footing to walk into a new normal because this global pandemic is definitely creating a new normal. Who knew when the clock struck midnight on January 1st, 2020, that this year of perfect vision, the year proclaiming and prophesying perfect vision would bring a global pandemic the tension between that to me has been so intriguing that how could this possibly be bringing perfect vision? Well, for me personally, I absolutely know that it is. It is not what I expected. I could have never dreamed this, but it has forced, and that word I choose carefully, you know I love to choose words carefully, forced home to shelter in place, to quarantine, to face some things that perhaps would never have been faced had I still been entangled in lots of disordered attachments, lots of busyness, lots of hyperactivity, lots of go, 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 go busyness. This has forced us into some contemplative practices, whether we wanted them or not, silence, stillness, and solitude. For many of us, they may have been unwelcome guests in our home. We did not invite you. <laughs> Ring the doorbell, stillness, silence, and solitude, and we'll pretend we're not home. We're, we don't want you in our house because all of our activities and busyness are hiding some real problems. And so we've had to ask ourselves some tough questions that maybe we weren't ready to ask ourselves. We've had to look at maybe places in our marriages, places in our parenting, places in our relationships that we didn't want to look at. But God in his mercy, I know, dispenses grace even when we aren't ready for these things. So it is my, it's been my earnest hope and prayer, and I continue to be here present for you in this stronger, everyday community to call back to you to help you move forward, to seize each and every day and the moments of each and every day with wide open eyes and ears so that you can live into eudaimonia, the pursuit of a meaningful life, a life that's so rich and purposeful and happy and joyful, even during crises. So today, we are on our final intention. And you know, I, I said COVID-19, we have six intentions, and I based it off COVID. Calm your nervous system, open your heart to new daily rhythms, right? Voice, voice, use your voice, voice your needs clearly and compassionately. That one's been a real, has had a lot of buzz. Initiate a hushing hour, dance in the rain, and today is based on 19. I didn't want to leave out the 19 because, as I shared initially, uh, 19 in some cultures is a really powerful number, as I've learned, and I just wanted us to take the time to begin the practice of writing down things that we're grateful for. Years ago, Oprah, I remember watching her show, and she was such an advocate for uh, a gratitude journal. And maybe you're not a journaler. Maybe you're not a writer. Maybe you just take 19 pictures on your phone of things that bring you great, great thankfulness. I have probably 19 pictures of flowers that are blooming and you can see them on my Instagram. You, you might think I'm a florist or a gardener. I'm not. I just, oh, just something about nature always speaks to me in a profound way 
whether it's looking out over my backyard this morning and seeing just beautiful uh, hibiscus opening, the big red one and yellow and orange, and they're just, oh, and these purplish hydrangeas. And then I, I noticed this beautiful robin perched on top of my trellis just singing the most beautiful song. So I can find 19 things in nature just in the blink of an eye because I have my eyes wide open and because I do my best to practice mindfulness. So how about you? Where are you? Where are you in initiating a hushing hour? How are you doing with that? Have you been asking yourself some tough questions in our initiate new daily rhythms? Like this pattern isn't serving me anymore. This habit is not serving my family anymore. Yelling is not creating a safe place in my home anymore. So where are you? Where are you? Are you learning to dance in the rain? I may be taking a walk in the misting rain later on because it just keeps misting here today. And every time I tie up my shoes, I go out and it's misting. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go anyway. Where are you on your journey through this crisis? Let me hear from you. Please join Stronger Every Day, our online community. The private group is on Facebook, but you can connect with us on Instagram, YouTube channel, just through our e-newsletter that you will get every week into your inbox, the blog. Where are you? So 19, the challenge I'm leaving you with is to write down 19 things that you are grateful for every single day. Okay, I'm an overachiever. 19 things this month. Take a month. Take three weeks. Take as long as you want, but start by writing something down. Or like I said, taking a picture on your phone if you're not a writer. But it, it does do something in your brain when you write something down. You can just have a small little notebook uh, and keep it out and let everybody in the house. Make this a family project. Say this is our gratitude notebook and everybody has to write down one thing they're grateful for today before they go to bed. And then the next morning, you can share what those things are. Or maybe once a week, put them in a gratitude jar. Be creative. The sky's the limit here. I have a, a beautiful little children's book called The Kindness Jar. And I love that little book, The Kindness Jar. So if you don't want to do gratitude, then you could do a kindness. Here's an act of kindness that someone did to me today or that I did to someone. So that you're edifying one another in good works edification, encouragement, good work, good job. I love that so much. So our intention then is I write 19 things I am grateful for every day or every week. I keep a family gratitude journal. You could say I write down 19 things or we speak out 19 things in our family circle of trust. Make it accessible to you. No unrealistic expectations ever are allowed in the Stronger Everyday community. Make it realistic for your family. And just start. Once you begin to speak healing words, and once you start building one another up, look at my face. It just... It causes your insides such joy and light. It fires the brain in a way like nothing else does. Just receive a positive compliment, a positive word from someone, and you feel like you're walking on air, right? Yeah. Our brain, our mind has a negativity bias, so it, it will be negative more than it will be positive. So we do have to apply some discipline, some real energy to being positive. And boy, you would think I'm the most positive person in the world since I'm always encouraging you that way, but I can get really negative. 
my husband and I were on a walk the other morning and I was just like all of a sudden noticing all the overgrown things and the bad things. And he's like, and I, I finally caught myself and I was like, gosh, I am being so negative. He's like, no, I was going to tell you that in a minute. So right then and there, we made a decision to notice the beauty, notice the good, notice and be aware. And the minute I did that, we went into this cul-de-sac. I saw a beautiful cardinal just alighting through the air, landed on this beautiful little tiny, I'll put the picture on Instagram, a little tiny bridge that was over in a yard. There was no water or anything, but it was all surrounded by flowers and it was just so beautiful. I'm like, the minute I shifted and made a conscious decision in my brain to begin speaking healing, happy, whole, beautiful words and noticing beauty, I saw it. It's the shift happens that swiftly, I promise. So I can't wait to hear what you are seeing and what you are being grateful for, please let me hear from you. You just can um, make, you can email me, you can subscribe to the community and you can connect that way. So I just wanna end with this beautiful prayer. I wanna close out our six simple intentions with a beautiful prayer. It's from the Essential Mystic Prayers. I love this book by Paraclete Press. And this one is uh, written by a John Henry Newman. May all I do today begin with you, Lord. Plant dreams and hopes within my soul. Revive my tired spirit. Probably need that one about right now. Be with me today. May all I do today continue with your help, O oh Lord. Be at my side and walk with me. Be my support today. May all I do today reach far and wide. O oh Lord, my thoughts, my work, my life. Make them blessings for your kingdom. Let them go beyond today. I love that part. Oh God, today is new unlike any other day. For God makes each day different. Today's grace, today's let me start that part over. Oh God, today is new, unlike any other day, for God makes each day different. Today, God's everyday grace falls on my soul like abundant seed, though I may hardly see it. Wow. I feel like I'm going to be saying this prayer every morning for quite a few mornings. It's such a beautiful prayer. It reminds me of the mindfulness meditation, um, the loving kindness meditation, because it starts within our own heart. May I do today, what may, what, may what I do today begin with you, God. Then it goes, may what I do continue with your help. Then may what I do today reach far and wide. And then may your grace fall on my life so that I can do these things. And we all say, amen. So thank you. I can't wait to continue in more conversations with you as we move forward on our life's growth path. And until next time, you remember, keep it close to your heart that you, my friend, have value, worth, and dignity. See you next time.